Okay, this is the start of the third session. Um, as we discussed in the last slide of the previous session, we talked about the fact that uh, the tendency of uh, atoms to lose electron is called electronegativity, and it's shown. Uh, it can be easily uh, shown in uh, periodic table. Here. Uh, to lose or gain electron is called ionization process and this is uh, happening uh, where metals exposed to non-metals here metals donate electrons and the other one accepts uh, electron as an example here you see in MgO oxide magnesium magnesium has this electron configuration as you can see here uh, where it has uh, two electron or two valence electron in this third layer and oxygen lacks two electron in its p orbital so what's happening mg is donating its two electron to oxygen and what we see then this one will have two positive load and the other one will have two negative one forming MgO this is the main idea in ionic bonding and um, I believe it's uh, the easiest type of binding to describe and visualize um, this is usually found uh, as I said in compounds between metallic and non-metallic elements atoms of uh, metallic element easily give up their valence electron to the non-metallic one so metallic one Na as an example here it gives electron to uh, chlor uh, in this process all the atoms um, actually reach to stable or inert gas um, configuration as we showed here they reach the configuration of in E which is an inert gas uh, here attractive repulsive and uh, net energy as a function of interatomic separation for two atoms are plotted using this equation uh, the net curve the red one here is the sum of the attractive and repulsive so if you sum its repulsive here which is in the positive side and attractive energy which is in the negative side if you add them together you will reach to this red <coughs> curve and uh, the minimum in the net uh, energy curve this red curve is called the uh, net energy curve the minimum in the net energy uh, curve corresponds to the equilibrium spacing so this one is correspond to the equilibrium is spacing which we know as R0 um, also the bonding energy for these two atoms E0 this value here E0 corresponds to the energy at this minimum point so from here to here is E0 and this is actually the energy required to separate uh, these two atoms at an infinite separation sorry uh, to an infinite separation of course the value of net energy is highest in uh, these materials that have ionic bonding and this is a uh, predominant in ceramics where as an example you see an ACL or MgO oxide magnesium and uh, difluoride calcium if you look at table 2 3 page uh, 32 of uh, your book you would see a comparison of uh, between bonding energies and melting temperature for various substance and you see in ionic bonding we have uh, in general uh, highest value of uh, bonding energy where uh, the bonding is between metallic and non-metallic elements the elements that situated at the horizontal extremist of periodic table okay uh, the next bonding type is covalent bonding 
and it's uh, found in materials that have atoms that have small differences in electronegativity. It means that in a periodic table, the table that we went through in the previous uh, slide, they sit uh, close to each other, similar to what you see here. And what happens here, they share electron. So there is no more donating or receiving, it's sharing electron. Uh, the bonds that involve uh, valence electrons are usually normally S and P orbitals that are involved. As an example, you see here the molecule of hydrogen. Each hydrogen atom has uh, one valence electron and they need one more to reach uh, to the <coughs> electron configuration of inert gas. So they have, as they have similar or the same electronegativities, negativities, they share their electron and they reach to the configuration of helium. Another example uh, for covalent bonding is bond hybridization. Hybridization means uh, hybrid, uh, hybridization means uh, mixing. This usually happen in carbon atoms. Um, here we have mixing of two or more atomic orbitals that results uh, to more orbital overlap during bonding result. <coughs> during bonding. Uh, for example, consider the electron configuration of carbon. As you can see here, we have 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Under some circumstances, uh, one of these electrons from 2s promotes to 2p. And we have, uh, due to this promotion of the electron, we have the new configuration. Now, now both uh, 2s and 2p are capable of sharing electrons. These two new orbitals are forming uh, and producing four sp3 orbitals that are equivalent to one another, as you can see here. As a result, we have four sp3 orbitals ready um, to share electrons. Uh, the schematic uh, diagram showing four sp3 hybrid um, orbitals that point to the corner of a tetrahedron as shown here with angle of 109 uh, degree. So why an angle like this? We can discuss this in the class. Now each of these um, orbital is ready to share electron with an atom like hydrogen therefore we will have a compound that uh, we know as CH4 or methane the hybrid sp3 bonding involving carbon is shown here here carbon has four valence electrons so they need four more and if uh, they receive it or they share it with one hydrogen, we have this result. The electronegativities of C and H are similar. And uh, so electrons are shared in sp3, hybrid covalent bonds. Uh, the last type of uh, bonding type uh, or primary bonding type is metallic bonding. And it's uh, found in metals and their alloys. Here, um, there is a simple model that has been proposed, as you can see in this picture. Uh, the valence electrons, actually what's happening, they are not bound to a specific atom, and they are actually being shared between different atoms. So they make uh, something which can be called, or is, which is called a sea of electrons, or electron cloud. Um, here, the remaining non-valence electrons um, are called ion cores. So these are ion cores, and the valence electrons are actually distributed equally between these ones. They act like a glue to hold these ion cores together, and this is what's happening in metallic bonding. 
when we have uh, a combination of um, primary different primary bonding we call it mixed bonding a common one is mixed bonding uh, between covalent and ionic binding in order to find the percentage of this ionic uh, bonding or ionic character we use this formula in which xa is the electronegativity of the first element participating in the bond and xb is the electronegativity of the second element in the bond. As an example, in um, magnesium oxide, we have XMG, uh, which is the electronegativity of magnesium equal to 1.3. You can find it in periodic table, and this is the uh, electronegativity of oxygen is 3.5. If we plug in these two numbers into this relation, we end up with 73.4% of ionic character in a magnesium oxide. Okay, we talked about primary bonds uh, which are metallic, ionic and covalent bonds. Secondary bonds uh, or Van der Waals bonds are weak in comparison to the primary bonds and uh, of course the bonding energy is less. We have uh, different types of uh, secondary bonding. One of them is fluctuating dipole and the other, uh, the other one is uh, permanent dipole. In fluctuating dipole, an atom is uh, at the beginning in general is in symmetrical form and then it's induced to make a dipole as shown here. An example is uh, for hydrogen molecule uh, where there is uh, molecular dipoles and there is a uh, van der Waals bond between these uh, dipoles. In the permanent dipole, uh, we see stronger bonds in uh, these uh, molecules. Actually, it occurs between molecules in which uh, hydrogen is covalently bonded to fluorine, to oxygen, uh, or nit uh, nitrogen. An example here is in hydrogen chloride molecules, where there is a secondary bonding between the negative side of this uh, permanent dipole molecule and the positive side of uh, this, <coughs> this molecule. If you want to compa uh, compare bonds, um, we can have a summary like this one, generally ionic, covalent and metallic bonds uh, which belong to primary bonds have larger bond energy compared to secondary one. Of course uh, in covalent we have different ranges, same as metallic, from small to large. And also we notice that um, the bond in ionic and metallic are non-directional so it doesn't matter in which direction they are all the same in all direction and uh, the bonding in covalent and secondary are directional. As uh, molecular solids um, consist of atoms and molecules held together by uh, interatomic and inter intermolecular forces that we just discussed so we can and we can discuss the relation between uh, uh, properties like melting temperature and the value of energy. In other, um, uh, in other words, if the bond energy between the molecules is small, the molecules can be transferred from solid into liquid easier. Therefore, we can say a larger value of easier bond energy results in higher value of melting point. Uh, increase in bond length is due to asymmetry of the E versus R curve. Uh, this results in increase in alpha, which is thermal expansion, as E0 or bond energy increases, this uh, asymmetry decreases. So we can say a smaller value of bond energy result in a larger value of A alpha. Uh, sorry, alpha L, which is a linear thermal expansion. So, in summary, based on what uh, we just discussed about the relation between bond uh, between bond type and bond energy and properties, uh, we can generally say that ceramics have high melting temperature and large uh, value of energy, of course, and a smaller value of thermal expansion for metals is in the moderate le level and for polymers of course these are very small. 
thank you very much and we can uh, make a summary of what we went through in this lecture as uh, you can see in this uh, profile in this slide